What is going on, YouTube Nation? This is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. Uh, got done with that exam. I actually did very well and I went out last night. And I promised you guys I would post a video on QYLD. And there's a lot of flaws with QYLD. It's not this all amazing, you know, holier than thou uh, covered call ETF for monthly dividend income or monthly income. Because there's a lot of flaws with these guys. Now, again, I'm gonna I own these guys. I'm gonna continue to invest in them. But there are a lot of cons to these guys. There are some pros, but the cons kind of outweigh the pros. And I'm gonna go over that and explain to you why. Now I'm gonna explain to you at the end why I like individual monthly dividend stocks over QYLD as well. So if you're new, make sure you hit that notification bell after you subscribe. Smash that like button. And let's check this out right now. So here's a history of QYLD. It started off at $26, and now it's down to way down to $17.50. Big deal because, again, this is a covered call ETF. It's probably at best, and again, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes, only disclaimer in the description, but it's probably going to stick around... $28 at best to at worst um, in a stable economy and if we're not in a recession pandemic maybe around $20 so it's not going to beat the S&P that's strike one I like looking at ETFs that actually keep up with the S&P but these guys are specific they're specifically income so you're looking at income you want that passive income now it's better than a bond don't get me wrong, QYLD is much better than buying a bond because, you know, it's a high yield. Um, you're, you're getting income from them, and um, I, it's a lot cheaper than, you know, BND. And BND's, you know, pretty expensive with um, Vanguard. And now, of course, you know, people start getting less aggressive uh, with their portfolio, and then they start buying bonds. I mean, that's kind of what happens. But QYLD is not going to go it's in a certain price range from here to here it's never going to go above thirty dollars i'd be extremely surprised if it goes above thirty dollars and it's going to be probably between one healthy 20 to thirty dollars so that's one issue now let's go over um their covered call etf in their portfolio i'm on their website with global x so Reasons to consider QYLD, it's high income potential, monthly distributions, and efficient op options. So I'm on the Global X website, and they have reasons to consider QYLD, high income potential, monthly distributions, and efficient options execution. So QYLD writes call options in the NASDAQ 100 index, saving, saving investors the time and potential expense of doing so individually. So one thing to notice is the expense ratio 0 0.60 percent so i'm going to go over that shortly so here's their distribution yield 12.06 it's monthly the yield okay it's 16.03 percent 12 month trailing yield the sec yield 0 0.32 percent now their objective okay again and summary it does a it follows a covered call or buy right strategy in which the fund buys the stocks in the NASDAQ 100 and writes or sells corresponding call options in the same index. So here's the thing. The net asset value, here's some uh, averages right here since inception. I mean, the thing is, you know, this is a covered call ETF. Now look at their portfolio. This is what makes these guys extremely strong. So we'll start with Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Alphabet, NVIDIA, Meta Platforms, Pepsi, Costco, Broadcom, Cisco, Comcast, Adobe. So they have a pretty well um, managed portfolio where they do this with covered call options. Now, I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the money right now because I'm in graduate school. But I want to go over a few other things with QYLD. Now, this is Per a link in Seeking Alpha, Will Blacks confirmed to me that it's tax year in 2021. The QYL distribution shall be classified as tax documents as being 100% ordinary dividends or short-term capital gains. The ETF's monthly form of 19A uh, filings estimated 2021 distributions to largely to be 
ROC, which ended up not being the case. So right there, there's a little bit of flaws, a little bit of transparency, lack of transparency. So taxes, that's a problem. Short-term capital gains or ordinary dividends, that's a problem. So now we're going to look at the expense ratio of these guys. So I'm on begintoinvest.com. These guys are actually a really good website with um, calculating expense ratios. So I'm just giving some examples real quick. So if you have an expense ratio of 0, 0.0, so I'm on begintoinvest.com. And I'm just giving you an example of the expense ratio. So if I put in $1,000, didn't pay anything in a year, I would owe you $6. Then all of a sudden I start putting in 50, 50,000, and in addition, just say 2,000. So look at these numbers I'm just putting in. And then number of years, Two, $784 I would owe these guys. So that's one problem. I'm just calculating some stuff, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong with doing this calculator. Now, this is just putting money in, not reinvesting dividends. I'm just putting an investment return of 11% as an example. And it's not increasing. Remember, you're getting that $20 to $30 range. That's what the way I see it. And you can correct me if I'm wrong or... Anytime you watch this video, you can come back to it in the future and say I'm wrong. Um, but I'm going to tell you, I don't see QYLD ever going above $30 and, you know, in a stable economy, probably $20 at the worst. So it's going to be from here to here. So you're kind of like in a little box so far. And I'll show you the box theory, my little box theory that I have with QYLD and RYLD and XYLD. So look, I'm, I'm owing these guys a lot of money. So let's just say if I put in, I don't know, $60,000. Uh, zero. Duration years, uh, seven. You're seeing how much I'm going to start um, owing these guys with this expense ratio. So the expense ratio can be a problem. And I just wanted to refer you guys to this website. These guys do a great job just showing you just some basic calculations, messing around with stuff, and going from there. So now let's go over the dividend trends. Now we have problems with the expense ratio. Now let's talk about the dividend trends. Okay, so looking from 2014, 25 cents, 14 cents, you know, it's, it's kind of... A little bit of a scatter bomb, but looking at this, just studying the trends, consistently you're probably going to get around 17 cents at worst. Usually, okay. So 2014, you're getting 25 cents, 19 cents, 14 cents, 15 cents at worst in 2015, uh, 18 cents. Then you're getting 15. Then you're getting 17 in 2016, and then 12 cents, 14. So you're seeing these trends. Nine cents, that, that's not fun in 2017. You're getting 14, 13, 24, then 25 cents, then 24 cents, then 22 cents. So let's just say, like I said, the box, okay, the price, and then you're going to have the dividend range from probably 17 cents right here to about... Let's just say 23 cents at best on average. Now, 2021, it was 49 cents. That's not going to happen all the time. So now you're enclosed in a box. You're stuck. You can't get out if you put that money in. You owe a high expense ratio, okay? 0.60%. Now, messed around with the calculations. You can, again, go mess around with that. Now I'm going to show you if you have a monthly dividend stock why it's way better than this ETF and a index fund, you know, it, because you're getting a certain range sometimes. I mean, with VYM, 
you know, in some of those, you're going to get a little bit of an increase over time. That's a pretty good um, ETF, quarterly dividends, with a cheaper expense ratio, way cheaper expense ratio. And here's the thing. So the box. Now I'm going to show you just the trends of Realty Income, which I like Realty Income 10 times better than QYLD, and I'll show you why. So look at 2016. It was 20 cents. Now it's more expensive. Don't get me wrong. 2017, it's 21 cents. In 2018, it's 22 cents. In 2019, 23 cents. In 2020, it's still 23 cents. Then it jumped up to 24 cents in 2021. So you're noticing some changes. Now, the payout ratio is 80%. That's a real estate investment trust. May have a lower yield, but look at these hikes over time with these guys. Now, the price is 69.31. So, if you manage to buy an extra $40, okay, of realty income, you're getting consistency. You're not in that box. Realty income has done decent against the S&P. So it's going to go up. It's a little bit more aggressive, and the price may be go down. It may go down in a recession, but usually it improves. So it's going up. So you're seeing an increase in price per share, which is good. The revenue is pretty good. The revenue increases every year, which I've posted in, in previous videos. And then that range is opening. So it's going like in this direction almost. It's you know the dividend range. So QYLD, you're stuck. You're stuck in a box. And monthly dividend stocks that are better, like Agree Realty Income, um, you know, Agree, I'm sorry, Agree Realty Corporation, Realty Income, um, Stag Industrial Complex, you know, they may, their dividends may not be as attractive, they might be pricier, but you get a little bit better bang for your buck in the long run. So you're giving yourself a raise. I like consistency. That's why I like monthly dividend stocks better than QYLD. Now, QYLD with my dividend investing strategy, I mean, I want to get to at least $100 on them and earn consistent $100. But, you know, if I have X amount of shares, I'm not guaranteed I'm going to get to that $100. Now, there's no guarantees in anything with dividend investing, uh, especially stocks and stuff. But the thing is, I like consistency and reliability and monthly dividend stocks like Realty Income, you know, Agree Realty Corporation, they're more reliable. They're more transparent with their portfolio. And uh, I don't have to pay an expense ratio. So that's one thing and one benefit of a real estate investment trust. 90% of what they make come back to us. So I just wanted to point this across. There are flaws with QYLD. It's not this all amazing monthly dividend ETF, it is the holiest and holier than thou. I mean, SPHD is keeping up. Actually, they're starting to get better, which um, I was always anti-SPHD. They're finally starting to improve. DHS actually is a better monthly uh, dividend ETF than QYLD in the long run. And, you know, you have DIA, which is another one. I mean, you're going to get monthly dividends from them, and you get consistency. So at least they're starting to increase in price per share, and they're increasing their dividend. QYLD will always be in this box that, that it can never get out of, it's just sewed in. It's like uh, um, somebody stuck in a, in a, a mummy stuck in a, a coffin, you know, or a tomb. It just can't get out. It's locked in forever. It's, in, you know, like uh, the mummy movie, you know, where that guy's in the tomb. He just can't get out. You know, unless if somebody lets him out, but individually he can't do it. And QYLD individually is stuck in this box and it just can't get out of it. And then you're paying these guys money to manage your ETF. When I like being a little bit more aggressive with my portfolio with individual stocks better than this um, ETF. So... Honestly, I like dividend stocks better than ETFs as well. So I'm answering a lot of your questions that you guys gave me. Let me know what you think of this video. If you are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. 
I'm going to post a video, a brief video tomorrow on some dividend stocks at checkout. So make sure you hit that notification bell after you subscribe if you're new to this channel. And make sure you smash that like button. And you guys have a good one. Let me know what you think about this video of QYLD. And hopefully I did the calculations correct. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. So you guys take care and have a good one.